You know, sum things up when Mrs. Photo Tripper's driving. In today's video, I want to talk to you about this. My most hated lens, this 55 millimeter prime. The reason why I hate it is because it's so bloody difficult to compose a really good shot. And, and there's actually nothing wrong with the lens itself. Technically, it's, it's brilliant. Uh, it's just that focal length, 55 millimeter on a prime lens. It's infuriating. And my success rate is probably the lowest success rate with this lens than any other lens. I fail most of the time. But this isn't a whinging video. It's, it's not complaining, no. This is a video to try and inspire you to embrace what I call the hell zone. The hell zone. Now you might have noticed that my lovely wife, Amanda, is driving the vehicle today. And that's because I'm drunk. <laughs> no, I'm not really. No, I'm not. I'm not drunk. Uh, no, <laughs> for the last few days, I've been having these weird dizzy spells. I've not been well and I don't know what it is. Uh, I, I don't feel ill in any way. It's just dizziness. So it's like a vertigo feeling. Maybe I've got labyrinthitis. I once knew somebody who got that all the time. It sounds kind of similar. Or maybe it's some, some medication that I'm on that's, that's making me dizzy. I don't know, but I don't feel safe driving. So today she's the pilot and I'm the passenger. So we went to the forest. I grabbed my camera bag and we hit the icy trail, you know, to see what we could find. So what is the hell zone then? Well, it's just some nonsense that I invented to describe that really tricky focal length that I would say goes from somewhere like 40 millimeter on a full frame to about 100 millimeter on a full frame. I just find that focal length really difficult to compose a good shot and that's why I call it the hell zone. But the reason why I'm making this video is to actually encourage you to embrace this hell zone because even though I hate the failure rate that I get with this 55 millimeter lens, and that's why I said you know, I hate this lens, I actually also love this lens because on those very rare occasions when it does work and I can fit a really tasty composition into this hell zone focal length, the shots are absolutely gorgeous. Let me give you an example. This image was shot with that 55 millimeter prime and it did take a bit of finessing to get everything just right in the composition. This image was shot with a different lens, but it was at 50 millimeters. And with that small amount of compression, I can bring the castle closer to the foreground instead of it being a small blip in the distance of a wide angle shot. But if you still need convincing to embrace the hell zone, keep watching. Now there's been a complaint. Carlos writes, you, Nigel, Mads, Thomas Heaton, Adam Gibbs, etc. need to go to a freaking hot weather continent or country, e.g. Africa, Australia, and take pictures. You guys need to get out of the winter photographer. Do you know, I'm, I'm very grateful that you pointed that out because at no point during this hellish, long, never-ending winter, shoveling snow, arctic blasts, power outages, and all that business, at no point, did it occur to me even once to go somewhere warm and tropical and just get away from the absolute misery of it all? Did it occur to you, love? Every day. Next year, I'll take your advice and I'll definitely go away somewhere a bit sunny and warm. I've just got to mention real quick my new book, Stories Within Stories by Gavin Hardcastle. Available for pre-order right now with early bird pricing, including free shipping and a free print. There's a link in the description below. Now, try not to be offended by this, which is probably going to be difficult because my audience, they're not easily offended, are they, love? No. Are you? <laughs> I hope not. Uh, but don't be offended because I include myself in what I'm about to say next. And that is that if you're not regularly at least trying to shoot inside of the hell zone, well, then you're probably shooting a lot of low hanging fruit. And to explain that, let me explain my journey as a landscape photographer right from the beginning. So a long, long time ago, I bought my very first DSLR. 
and it probably had a kit lens. I can't remember what the focal length was, but the first time I tried to use it out in the field, I thought, this is really difficult to compose a shot. I, I can't fit what I see into the frame. It's, it's too tight. And after a, a lot of frustration, I went back to the camera store and said, you know, I'm struggling with this. What do you suggest? And of course, they suggested I get a full frame camera with a 16 to 35 millimeter lens. Does this sound familiar to you? It probably does, because I'm expecting that many of you have gone through the same experience. So I bought that and just like they promised, I went out for my first shoot and I could do anything. I could compose anything that I saw, I could fit into that frame. It was glorious. It was, it was so easy and it taught me a lot about composition. So I'm not knocking the low hanging fruit focal lengths. You almost have to start there so that you don't get so frustrated that you completely quit photography. I think it's a good place to start. But for years, I, I shied away from the hell zone because I'd, I'd remembered how disastrous my previous attempts were. And then after a few years of shooting super wide shots, I thought, you know, I'm getting a bit sick of all my compositions looking the same. So then I got a telephoto lens. So I bought my telephoto lens and again, it was all low hanging fruit because I found that whatever I wanted to compose, I, I could do it because I had the reach. I could pick a vignette, let's say a distant mountain peak. I could zoom in, fill my frame with that shot and it was dead easy. So for years, I was in this, this comfortable zone of always being able to compose whatever I wanted. I could use the super wide to compose whatever I saw and then I could use the telephoto to pick out a distant object and fill the frame. But one day, and I don't know why, I bought this lens, I bought this 55 millimeter prime. I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe I was gonna do some street photography or portrait photography, I don't know. But I think because I'm a tight ass Yorkshireman, it's probably more likely that it was on sale and I got a really good deal. Cause back in those days, these Sony lenses were a lot cheaper than they are now. So I bought this lens and I hated it. I could not get used to 55 millimeter. And it's a prime, of course, so you zoom with your feet. And I struggled and I struggled and I struggled, but it's so small and light that I just kept it in my camera bag. It always had a cozy little corner in my camera bag. And periodically over the years, I'd get used to this treacherous focal length and I'd kind of be familiar with what it couldn't do. So I'd only bring it out when I thought there was a chance that it might work. And over the years, I got better and better at recognizing scenes when I was out in the forest or in the mountains or whatever, where this might be useful. Here's a perfect example. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm using portrait photography lenses to shoot landscapes. And as you get more comfortable, you can get shots like this. This was shot at 105 millimeters on a medium format camera. So that's the equivalent of about 83 millimeters on a full frame camera, which is right in that zone of portrait photography, but I'm just using it for landscapes. So the purpose really of this video is to encourage you to grow and to evolve as an artist in your compositions, in your landscape photography, by not sticking to what's safe, by embracing the hell zone. Try and get away from those super wide shots, those super telephoto shots and, and challenge yourself. I mean, I know a lot of people have a 70 to 200 millimeter lens and having taught photography workshops for over 10 years, I tend to see when people do use them, they'll usually be closer to the 200 range rather than the 70. So, so whatever you've got, whether it's a prime lens like this, or whether you've got a, a 24 to 105 is like the perfect lens to embrace the hell zone. Experiment with it, try and get out of your comfort zone and really try to, to fill your frame with a beautiful composition that might take you a lot longer to refine than your super wides or your telephotos. But when you can nail it, you will absolutely love it. So it might take you a little bit longer to compose your shots while shooting in the hell zone, but slowing down is something I would definitely recommend. 
Now, one of the reasons why I love this Hellzone focal length is it usually forces you to compose a shot that has a lot more intimacy with your subject, but not as much as a telephoto shot. You've still got a slightly wider scene, but it's a bit more intimate than a super wide. I'll give you an example. So I shot this image a few years ago in Moraine Lake, and I started out with, I think it was a 16 to 35, and that far distant peak, it was just tiny. It was just this tiny little pyramid. I could have put the telephoto on and filled the frame with just that little peak, but I wanted to have something of the surrounding valley in the frame, and the 55 was perfect for that. So it's somewhere in between wide angle and almost telephoto. It was tricky. I had to move around quite a lot, up and down, backwards and forwards, side to side. But eventually I got the composition and I really love it. The, the other thing that I love about shooting with this particular lens and anything from let's say 40 millimeter to 100 is it really gives you a much more natural perspective. So you don't have any of that wide angle lens distortion that you would get with something like a 16 to 35 or wider and you don't get this super telephoto unnatural viewpoint that you know perhaps an eagle could see that but you could never see that so there's something a bit unnatural about super telephoto and super wide but when you're in this hell zone area it, it's very natural it looks like what it would look like with the naked eye so if you've got a beautiful composition of a beautiful place with really nice light and nailed the shot, there's a chance that if somebody went to visit that place, they would see it the same way that you captured it with your camera. Whereas if you've got a soup, let's say a 40 millimeter, and you're getting really close to your foreground and you're using that lens distortion like you should to make things more interesting, the chances are if a person was to visit that location in real life to try and see where you captured that shot, it wouldn't really look like it does. To the naked eye and that's one of the things i love most about shooting with this lens and the hell zone all right so finally i should actually demonstrate the experience of shooting with the hell zone because i think this perfectly demonstrates the frustration that you're about to experience if you listen to my advice and embrace shooting at these focal lengths and that is failure you are going to fail a lot so i'm trying to frame up this shot of, of this tree here and uh, I'll be quite honest with you, it's crap. <laughs> it's, it's rubbish. I, I mean, I'll take this shot and you'll see, you'll see what I mean. And if this shot is absolute rubbish, <laughs> here's the shot. Oh, that, that is bloody awful, that is. Ugh. But let's check it on the crapometer. Yeah, it's, oh, oh, God, straight through chods and into diarrhea. I think we're going to delete this. There you go, it's... Uh... You guys tell me that you want to see my failures. The truth is, the reason why you don't sometimes see a video every single week, it's not because I don't work and I don't go out to film them. I go out and film them all the time, but a lot of the time they're just failures. Sometimes I'll drive six hours and just get sideways rain. Sometimes the light will just not perform. Whatever the reason, I do go out all of the time to try and get you content but it doesn't always work out and that is why you don't see videos every week. But anyway, if you did enjoy this video, please give it the old thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to tickle my bell so that you get notifications. And I can't believe it's snowing. It's April and it's snowing. And I guess we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.